Let's take a look at problem 113A. This is a transfer pricing problem. And in my experience, transfer pricing problems can be very short and simple or a little bit longer and more convoluted. And so I've decided I wanted to give you a bit of a more challenging version of the transfer pricing problems. The math involved is simple, but as you can see from the problem, it's a, it's a pretty long problem. And again, just go to accountingworkbook.com to download it. Um, but you know, this is a long problem and, and there's always a mix of companies that can get confusing. And so you really got to keep them straight. So what I'd advise you to do is if you are tackling a transfer pricing problem, try to draw a picture of all the companies involved in their relationships. And that's what we're going to do when we tackle this problem. Uh, having a bit of a diagram of which companies are involved and where they sit uh, really does help. So anyway, let's read the problem uh, and then jump into it. So it says, Phonytel Inc. was a massive media company that controlled a cable company, a 4G wireless data network, and several other related businesses. Phonytel Inc. was a highly decentralized organization where managers were encouraged to make decisions that were most profitable for their own divisions. You often find a phrase like that. They talk about centralized versus decentralized. And we'll talk about that in our answer um, to this problem. But you often see that in transfer pricing problems because when they're decentralized, it creates a bit of a dilemma for, for management. One of Phonytelling's subsidiary businesses was Phonytel Data. Okay, so actually let's just start to highlight company parts here. So we got Phonytel Inc. That's the parent company. We got Phonytel Data. That's a subsidiary. Um, okay, reading on. Uh, it says uh, Phonytel Data was an installer of data servers. Phonytel Data's manager, Steve Frost, had a large job that would require the installation of 2,000 servers. Uh, the request received three bids, one from Phonytel Networking, so I'm highlighting them yellow again because, well, it says a subsidiary of Phonytel Inc. So, okay, Phonytel Data is this installer of data servers. <laughs> and, you know, I don't even really know what a data server is. It's a computer that sits in an air-conditioned room somewhere. Uh, and uh, they had a bunch of servers to install. And so they said, okay, we're, we're going to have a request for proposals. You know, you're going to send me uh, your bid and... Uh, uh, three bids, one from Phonytel Networking, one from Little Guy's Data. Well, that's not a subsidiary here, but it's another company, and one from Big Name Competitor. Details of the bids are below. Uh, so Phonytel Networking bid $1,800. It says the company would uh, purchase the processors from Phonytel Chips. Oh, there's another company, Phonytel Chips. A subsidiary of Phonytel, the final product would be of very high quality. $1,800 is the bid. Little Guy's Data, $1,600 is their bid. The company would purchase processors again from Phonytel Chips. Uh, and the final product would be of equal quality to Phonytel Networking. So they're giving us a cheaper price for an equal quality product. Uh, big name competitor, $1,550, an even cheaper bid, a better bid. Uh, the company would manufacture its own parts. So they're not buying anything from Phonytel chips. They're making their own chips. Uh, the final product would be of equal quality to that produced of Phonytel networking. So it doesn't matter who makes it. Uh, they're all of equally good quality. So, you know, you can see here, all else held equal, you would take the $1,550 bid, you know, if you didn't know anything else. That's You would immediately say, well, I'll take the cheapest bid because they're all of equally good quality. Might as well save some money. Uh, let's read on. Frost was frustrated by the bids and phoned Kiana Chang, the manager of Phonytel Networking. So let's just draw a picture of what's going on so far. Uh, we've got, uh, sorry, I got to get my pen out here. We got Phonytel Inc at the top, right? That's the parent company. Then Phonytel Data is what Frost is the manager of. Uh, so I'm just gonna abbreviate now, Phonytel Data. Uh, and they've asked for bids and they've received 
three bids. They've received one from Phonytel Networking. That's us. I'll make everything that's kind of our company in black and an outside company, I'll make it blue. Uh, we've got another bid coming in from Little Guys Data. And one more bid coming in from a uh, big name competitor. I'm actually going to space this out a little better. Big name competitor. Uh, okay. Let me just give myself a little bit more real estate here to work with. Okay, so those are our, so far the relationship. Now, if we go with Phony Tell Networking, uh, we're going to buy our chips from Phony Tell Chips. Little guys are also going to buy from Phony Tell Chips, and big name competitor is going to make it themselves. And so, not really relevant for us to explore that relationship. So, that's sort of the scene. Now, to kind of go a little bit further, let's put some numbers to this. Phonytel Networking is offering the chips at, or not the chips, but the servers rather, at $1,800. Uh, let's put that number up here. <laughs> Maybe the arrow should go in the other direction. So they're offering the servers for $1,800. Little guys are offering the service, uh, the servers rather, for 1600. And big name competitors for 1550. So those are the three bids coming in. Obviously, if you're Steve Frost for uh, Phonytail Data, this is the best looking bid, right? That's the one you would wanna take because you wanna save money. You wanna make a better profit. Okay, anyway. Uh, Frost was frustrated by the bids and phoned Kiana Chang, the manager of Phonytel Networking. How on earth is it that the only internal bid is by far the highest? You're not anywhere near capacity. Shouldn't you be cutting me a deal? Okay, there's a little phrase there you often read. You're not anywhere near capacity. Remember what that means when we are talking about um, transfer pricing. If you're above capacity, you should only sell, or, or you're at capacity or above it, you should only sell or transfer things at market price because you could just sell it elsewhere in the market. If you're below capacity though, the thing that optimizes company profits, corporate profits, and optimizes decisions is to sell at your variable cost or your marginal cost, your opportunity cost, your cost of making one more. And typically that's your variable cost. So because they're not at capacity, probably the transfer, at least in, in theory, in the lab, you would want to transfer this at cost. You wouldn't want to charge above those, those variable costs. Uh, shouldn't you be cutting me a deal? You've got to drop below 1550 or I'll buy from BNC, big name competitor. Chang replied, look, I understand where you're coming from, but I have margin to protect. I simply can't offer you a better deal. The bosses are stressing a focus on higher margins and higher average selling prices. I can't tell all my salespeople to pitch the high end only to kill the firm, the firms, uh, just to make you guys look good. So I guess she's worried about killing her firm's average selling price. You know, selling for cheaper is going to hurt some numbers. And she's saying, look, I don't want to kill my numbers just to serve you better. It's, I've got to look out for myself. And this kind of goes back up to that top sentence about this being a highly decentralized organization. Uh, you know, she's saying, look, I, I'm not really worried about the company as a whole here. I'm worried about myself. And, you know, and by the way, I'm not trying to make her sound selfish. She's behaving rationally. She's saying, my bonus is or whatever. My performance is measured based on average selling price or, you know, uh, selling higher margin items. And selling to you is going to hurt those numbers. And I don't want to hurt myself. Right? I want to look good. And, you know, who can blame her? And if it's decentralized, that means she's in charge of her own decision. So she's making the right decision for her. That's the point of this. Um... Okay, reading on. Frustrated, Frost called Tegan Bertuzzi, the CFO of the parent company. So Tegan Bertuzzi's up here at Phony Tell. 
Uh, maybe I'll, well, Tegan Bertuzzi's here at Ponytail. Frost is here at this level. And uh, Kiana, Ber uh, Kiana is here, Kiana Chang. Um, okay, uh, frustrated Frost called Tegan Bertuzzi, the CFO of the parent company. And she says, I'll have a look at the issue, said Bertuzzi. And she noted the following details. Phonytail data would incur $300 in variable costs on top of its purchase price and sell the installation for $2,400 per server. Okay. Phonytail networking's variable costs would be $1,400 and included the cost of processors purchased from Phonytail chips. Uh, okay, so Phonytail networking, their variable cost maybe I should have written that over here, is $1,400. And they're going to go ahead and sell for $1,800. So uh, they're going to make a margin of $400 if they make the deal uh, at that price, at the $1,800 they bid. Uh, Phonytail Chips sold this type of processor for $500. Their contribution margins were typically 20%. So Phonytail Chips, when they make the sale, they're going to sell for $500, but it costs them, well, their margin is 20%. So 500 times 20% is 100. That means their, their contribution margin. So their, their variable costs then here are $400, right? They're making contribution margin of 100 bucks, means their variable costs are 400. Okay, so I think we're getting a sketch of this thing. Uh, Phonytail data, by the way, is going to sell out to customers for $2,400. That's what their bid is to their own customer for the installation. And they add $300 in cost on top of whatever bid they accept. So whatever bid they accept, $300 is, I guess, their labor cost, their installing cost. Maybe they have some hardware they add to it, but that's basically the relationship and it says phone detail chips had excess capacity so they're not at capacity they don't necessarily have to charge market price either uh same situation here with phone detail chips they're going to sell these guys 500 dollars worth of chips that cost them 400 dollars to make Whew. nothing to worry about on the bnc side of the table so what the heck is happening here? Well, let's go back up to the top. Uh, it says, give the dollar advantage or disadvantage of accepting each deal for the parent company, Phonytel Inc. So if you're Phonytel Inc., I think you probably get the feeling just intuitively, you'd rather buy from your own companies, right? Especially if there's excess capacity. You just have the feeling like it feels better to buy your own chips and your own stuff. And you put your own stuff in your own servers and then you install your own stuff. There's, there's sort of, my intuition would tell me they should do this. Um, let's see if the numbers agree, right? Because just based on this one bid, if PD acts in their own interest, they should take B and C's uh, uh, offer, right? They should say, okay, BNC, you won, you had the cheapest bid. That's what we're taking because that maximizes my profit, right? At Phonytel data's level, I'm buying for $15.50 from you. I add $300 worth of costs. So my total cost is $18.50. I sell the customers for $2,400. I make better money at Phonytel data. I should take that deal. No brainer. But it's complicated by the fact that this is not uh, these are not all outside companies. There are some inside companies involved in, and that's the real dilemma. So let's, uh, let's look at the actual overall cost of each offer to the company. So, uh, if we accept the phony tell networks bid versus uh, little guy, what is it? Little guy company. Little guy da data and uh, B and C, big name competitor. Okay, so what is the cost? Well, B and C is the easiest, 1550. Right, we just pay them 1550. Let's look at the little guy data offer. They're charging us $1,600, but our company actually makes $100 underneath, right? We, we're 
getting $500 for something that costs us $400, we're making $100. In other words, overall, yes, Phonytel Data has to pay $1,600, but because Phonytel Chips makes $100, or Phonytel Data has to pay $1,600, uh, because Phonytel Chips makes $100, the overall cost to us is actually $1,600 minus the $100 we're making down below. We'd rather take the little guy data deal than the big name chips deal because again they're they're buying from our supplier and we're making a little money there our company is is fifty dollars better off uh, per server and there's a couple thousand servers so that's uh, you know hundred thousand bucks I guess uh, we're better off to do this one right we're better off with little guy data now let's take a look at phony tell uh, networking let's take a look at that deal if we accept phonytel networking's deal um so the cost to us as a company is just the variable cost so 400 dollars is our variable cost embedded in this 1400 dollars is the fact that they've you know only paid 400 dollars. maybe I'll, I'll look at this a different way actually um, there's $400 basically in profit tied up there. There's $100 in profit tied up there. So in this $1,800 bid, there's $500 of profit, right? $400 at the top, $100 at the bottom. In other words, if they just charge them cost, the total cost to our company would have been $1,300. Right, uh, these guys had $400 in variable costs added. These guys had $900 in variable costs on top. Uh, so the, the overall cost would have been $1,300. Now you might be saying, well, where'd you get the 900? That went a little quick for me. So again, these guys are charging $500 to Phonytel Networks. Phonytel Networks uh, has $1,400 in variable cost. So to get from 500 to 1400, that's $900 in cost that these guys are adding to the, the product. These guys are adding $100 to their variable cost. So that's where we get that number. So again, if these guys are going to charge $1,800 and there's $400 embedded in profit there and $100 embedded in profit there, the cost would have been $1,300. So if you're phony tell networks, the cheapest deal for you as a company, the best deal, and therefore the most profitable, because in any of these cases, you're gonna you're gonna add uh, a few hundred dollars of cost. I forget what they said. They're gonna add three hundred dollars in cost. So in any of these cases, once they buy it, they're gonna add three hundred dollars of their own costs. And then they're going to turn around and sell it for uh, $2,400, right? So what's their profit on this deal? Well, they would make $800 per server uh, if they buy internally. And again, that profit gets shared among those companies. Uh, they would make $600 profit per server there and $550 there. No brainer, they should take Phonytel Networks offer. Now again, that's Phonytel Inc. would like that to happen. So the dollar advantage or disadvantage is, again, you can see the differences there, right? It's an $800 profit from Phonytel Networks, $600 from Little Guy Data, and $550 from Big Name Computer. That's to the parent company. Now to Phonytel Data, the Phonytel Networks offer is the worst, and Big Name Computers is the best. So that's again the the pull of this type of a question so i think i've answered that give the dollar advantage or disadvantage of accepting each deal well you know either one of these deals is going to be profitable but we make the most money if we take phonytel networks deal what are tegan bertuzzi's options here what should she do okay so having crunched the numbers obviously if you're phonytel inc you want to make the most money so intuitively you might say well eight hundred dollars tell them to just do the deal right tell so what are our options well option one force the deal through 
Phonytel. Uh, is it Phonytel Networks or Phonytel Data? I always forget my acronyms here. Phonytel Networks. So just force them to accept it. Say, look, sorry, Steve Frost, you got to take it from our own guy. Like, we got to eat our own dog food here. Uh, this is what we make. We got to stand behind our product. There's real benefits to it, right? And there are big advantages to doing this. One, you know, there's branding stuff going on. If you have, if you hire Phonytel uh, Data to install servers and then they install a bunch of the competitors' servers, like that doesn't make sense. Like if I were uh, uh, working for uh, Dell and they said, okay, Dell, time to install a bunch of servers. And I, I went into the installation and I, I brought a bunch of, I don't even know who else makes servers, Oracle? Do they make servers? They seem like they make servers. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Uh, I bring a bunch of Oracle servers with me uh, into my Dell installation. People, the customer would be like, what is going on here? Like, this is weird, right? So probably this wouldn't even go out to bid in real life. This would just be like, of course we do it internally and done deal. But the in a theoretical world where this goes out to bid, we have this dilemma. Uh, there are branding reasons why we should just do it, force it to go through internally. Um, other reasons go through internally. We just saw it's the most probable. So reasons, pros, <laughs> uh, branding, right? It's our brand throughout. And, uh, uh, the big pro we also discussed is profitability cons. Well, if this is truly decentralization, this is a centralized decision. So I'll just put decentralization. Right? We're kind of overriding part of what makes our company work. Um, the difference in profitability for our company is like a hundred grand, I think. It's it's well, let's see, eight hundred versus let's just say we we took that one. It's two hundred and fifty dollars per computer, right? Eight hundred versus five fifty. That's two hundred and fifty dollars different. Two hundred and fifty dollars times two thousand computers. That's half a million dollars. So it is quite a bit of, of savings, but you you might be saying, well is it worth it for me to sort of take over, take control for this decision? That's up to them. I, I would think here the pros uh, of, of overriding outweigh the cons. Option two, let the divisions hash it out. What does that mean? It means, look, let them do what they're going to do naturally. And naturally, this guy's gonna take BNC's deal, right? Steve Frost would be incentivized to accept BNC's deal. The pros here are it maintains decentralization and the cons are just the flip here. And, and there's advantages to being decentralized, right? You you like to have your managers acting in their own best interest and, and overriding them is a negative thing. It, it is a negative thing. Uh, but the cons are just, just as they were above. Branding, you know, I'm putting, I'm. Dell and I'm installing a bunch of Oracle servers. Does that make sense? I wish I knew more about servers. Maybe that does make sense. I, you can tell me in the comments. Uh, also profitability. It's, it's the least profitable for the company. So just because it makes sense for the manager doesn't mean it makes sense for the company. Option three is an interesting one. You can force the exchange force the deal through PN, uh, but at a different price. So you could theoretically force PN to offer to match BNC's bid. You can see PN still makes a profit on it. You could even have a negotiated deal. This is the beauty of transfer pricing. You're, you're shifting things around on your own books and you're saying, PD, you're going to be more profitable or less profitable. PN, you're going to be more or less profitable. And the other thing I've seen proposed is to actually say, okay, PC, you can sell at 500 to PN. PN, you sell at 1800 to PD. PD, we'll write it on your books as if it happened at 1550. And Phonytel Inc. just have the parent company kind of eat the difference, right? You can sort of say, okay, well, we'll show our, our parent company is eating the difference. It doesn't make a difference. It's it's all kind of a, a uh, just shifting around profits underneath. So we can sort of give everybody what they want and just have the parent company take a charge 
uh, for the difference. So there are ways to make this happen. Another con, by the way, just thinking of cons for, for forcing this deal to happen. Um, we went through a bidding process and it kind of makes our bidding process appear illegitimate. If we, if we get all the bids and we go, oh, we're going internally anyway, it, it delegitimizes the bidding process. And, and if we put things out for bid and we're just constantly go with the internal bidder, nobody's going to bid after a while. Like, what's the point, right? Uh, it's wasting everybody's time. So uh, wasting, maybe it's good we're wasting competitors' time, but it is, it is a time waster if we're... Uh, going through bids uh you know and, and only to take our own offer uh, and our own offer was the worst one so that's something to consider so in any event in terms of like what should she do if i were running this company uh, if i were a professor marking your essay here or your your paper i would just sort of say okay have they made a reasonable argument have they weighed the pros and cons and made a, a reasonable recommendation right um, you know, and I, I wouldn't really say, oh, you must do this or you must do that. My feeling is just reading this fact pattern, they really got to go with their internal deal. Uh, and the Tegan has to do something to make that happen, right? It's ludicrous to think that we make all the parts and we're not going to use our own parts. I, I think that would be a, a just a strategical blunder. Um, it looks bad and it's just like there's real advantage to, to using your own capacity to, to say nothing of the profitability. Just strategically, I think they ought to be uh, using their own stuff. That's my feeling. That's just my like gut talking here. But I do feel like that's the way to go. All right. What a long video. I, I hope this was useful to somebody. Oh, let me know if you made it to the end. I bet you nobody sees this. I, I wonder. If you see me talking right now, leave a comment and say, I made it to the end. I'd be amazed. All right, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.